Welcome back to part three of our series where we are building some streaming functionality into our TD Ameritrade Python library. In our previous video, we definitely went through what I would call is the meat of it, right? So we defined basically how we want our streaming client to operate. So how it needs to send and receive messages, how it needs to connect to our WebSocket. Um, and eventually at some point, I'm gonna be disclosing how to close it. Now. For the most part, uh, there were a couple functions here that were, were asynchronous. So that basically means that they are Python coroutines that can run concurrently. Um, and the benefit of that is that they can start at the same time. And so sometimes we can actually get a performance boost because obviously if we can start multiple things at the same time um, and they're not running um, one after the other, but they're running basically concurrently, that means they can actually, we can do more quicker, right? So. What are we going to do from here? Well, now we need to do, why did it tab in so much? I don't like when it tabs in like that. Um, now we are going to define a new method called new request template. So every time you create a request, it will be basically leveraging this method behind the scenes. Why is that? Well. Part of it is I do not want you to have to build request because there's a very good chance that by no intention of your own, you're gonna make a typo potentially, right? I mean, if you have to make five or 10 requests, there's a good likelihood that your first time doing it, they're not gonna work perfectly. So to help standardize the creation process of a request, basically what I do is I have a method that uses a pre-built template in order to basically build your request. Now, also what it will do is it will fill out your request ID and populate any important information from your user credentials dictionary. So what I have, just again to save a little bit of time, I don't have it on this one, no. No worries, we'll go to GitHub. <laughs> this is the second one. Dun, dun, dun. There is a template. Here it is. I'm just gonna copy and then we'll just kind of go through it a little bit. Because this one, it's not too complicated, it's just more understanding what you're looking at. So first thing is I need to go build our request ID, right? So part of building our request is counting, well, currently how many requests do I have? Well, that's easy because remember, I have an attribute that's defined with my client that is basically housing all of my requests. It's a dictionary, right? So I basically say, call that dictionary, call the request keys, because I know that one returns a list, count that list, and then just add one to it. And that's pretty much it. Additionally, I have this thing right here. So this is our actual request. So here is request template. You can see it's nothing fancy. It's just a dictionary where I have a placeholder for service, the request ID is populated with whatever was calculated up here. Command is left empty. Account is just your account. App ID is, sorry, source is just your app ID. And then the parameters is any parameters that need to be passed through. Now, this might change a little bit. Again, nothing super crazy because, I mean, for the most part, it is what it is. Um, but we might be able to make it a little bit more general. So that way I can maybe use it up here or something like that. So that's just kind of the idea behind it. So we'll see, I'll kind of debate what it is, but the idea was I only want to have to do this once, so that way we don't have to constantly keep making these templates, right? That's kind of the general idea behind it. Once we build our template, I just simply return it back to whatever function called this one. Now from here, we're gonna get into some more validation techniques. Now, this one is also a little bit more of a work in po progress because I make a lot of assumptions behind the scenes about what you're gonna be passing me and I can't necessarily always assume that. But basically for this validate argument one, it's gonna take any of the fields that you're passing through and it's gonna to check to make sure that they're okay for the particular service that you're using. Now, how do I do that? If you look in the TD uh, repo, you'll see a file called fields. This fields file is pretty neat because it basically houses all the keys for each service along with the field number. So th what does this allow us to do? It's very simple at this point. What it's gonna allow us to do is you can use these 
as your arguments and I will be able to grab this for you and build that request so that way you don't need have to remember what each number is. You can actually use something that's a little bit more intuitive, which is like, hey, it's an account ID. That's easy to remember. Um, 29 for the mark is not very easy to remember necessarily. So the idea behind this was I wanted to simplify the process of building our request and also give some more flexibility for those users who want to make it a little bit more intuitive for somebody else who has to read your code, right? Because nobody's gonna remember what number is what, right? So that's kind of the general idea behind it. Um, there's basically two dictionaries One right now. One is basically just the opposite of the other, but there's obviously some issues, which is like this one's a number, this one's a string. So I'm gonna have to standardize that. And then on top of that, I will probably um, figure out some way to simplify this. Again, it, it definitely can be simplified, but for the most part, I just wanted to get the thing working. Okay, so how does this whole validation process work? Well, at a very high level, I just make some assumptions and I proceed with those assumptions. So the first thing I do is I see if the argument is a list or not, because if it's a list, then I know I'm gonna to have to do this validation process for each item in that list. So what I do is I say, if is instance, the argument that was passed through, if it was an instance of a list, I'm gonna do something else, I'm gonna do something else. Well, for a list, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna initialize a new list. This will be called args list. And that will be initialized empty. And then I'm going to say for arguments and arguments, basically. I'm going to say, OK, I have an argument. See if the argument is an int. Again, very basic assumption. I'm going to say is instance argument if it's an integer. And if it's an integer, then I'm assuming that I can go into my self.fieldIDs dictionary, so the one that has the number as the leading one. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say, okay, self field IDs dictionary. I need to make sure I pass through that endpoint that was sent through because that's telling me which service I need to look into. And I'm gonna see if that key is in our particular, um, uh, what is it in our particular uh, item, right? And on top of that, I forgot here, I have to make that argument a string and I have to see if it's in that dictionary. If it is, then great news. I can add it to my argument list by just simply calling my list, calling the append method, and then passing through the argument as a string. Because remember, everything has to be sent over as a string. Now, if it's not an int, I'm assuming it's a string. So see if it's a string. And with this one, if is instance argument string and argument in self.fields keys dictionary for that particular endpoint, if it is there, then great. Take our argument list, call the append method, we're gonna turn the result of this thing into a string. Yes, no, yes. But I have to make sure I put the argument at the end, I think, yes. Um, so that's assuming it's a list, right? Well, that's great, yeah, 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 right. Um, and then from here, um, I'm just going to return argument list. So I'm basically finished at that point. Now from here, if it's not a list, I still need to do more checking, right? So basically we're doing all this again, but I'm not looping through it each time, right? So the idea is that um, it's basically only for that one item. Again, I chose a, a basically a poor cho choice of uh, of words because now I have to go through and change it each time. And obviously this is where things I'm kind of going, now this can obviously be done better, right? Because this, this just to me, usually if it's messy like this, something's usually a big giveaway that I'm doing something wrong. And then this is obviously where I'm kind of going like, wait a minute, like there's probably an opportunity to simplify this. Um, but at this point, I just wanted to get a basic uh, example of it working. And then from there, 
um, we can kind of adjust it as needed. But hopefully that's encouraging to some of you who <laughs> go through this process. Um, it's always very much a work in process. It's very rarely the first time you do it, is it gonna work perfectly? Um, and then from here, I'm gonna do the same with a string. And if it's a string, I'm going to basically take this one and just switch it a little bit, argument, and then I'm going to return argument. So, L if, and then else, um, return none. Now, what's wrong with this? Well, I'm assuming that you're giving me a number. Why can't it just be a, a number that's a string, right? So why can't it just be the, the string one? So part of this is saying, okay, maybe there's a way we can expand this to make it even more flexible for people who, you know, hey, maybe they put in a one, for example, right? Well, luckily there's a string attribute that will tell us if it's a digit or not. So with that, we can even expand this a little bit, right? So that's the first thing. Here, I'm returning none, but then up here, I don't really have any check that is going to say, hey, if there's nothing here, I'm not raising that value error, error yet. So part of this still has to build in that value error and says, okay, something went wrong. Like, how am I gonna let that person know something went wrong? Um, so again, for a first run through, just to get some initial testing out of the way, it worked fine, but there definitely is an opportunity here to kind of expand upon it and make it, I would say, simpler and also a little bit more flexible at the same time. So I think it's cool. I like this process of building. It's always interesting to see how you can make it better. Okay, so with that though, we are going to make our first request. And so the first one that we're gonna do is quality of service request. Our quality of service request will take quality of service level as its argument. And <clears throat> basically with the quality of service, it ranges from zero to five where zero is the fastest and five is the slowest. And they measure it, I think, in like milliseconds or something like that. If you read the uh, documentation, it will tell you um, how different it is. So the first thing we do is uh, validate the argument and we are going to say quality of service level. And then we're gonna do self validate argument. And then I want my argument to be my quality of service level and my endpoint to be my quality of service request. So again, if you were to go into this little dictionary, you would say, okay, let's go find the quality of service request. Uh, where is it? Oh, here it is, great. So if you pass through the key express, it's gonna return the integer zero. If you call the quality of service request and you pass through um, a zero, it's gonna return the key. Um, express or something like that, right? So that's kind of the uh, general idea behind it is it kind of allows you to um, kind of switch in between if necessary um, and something like that. Um, now looking at this, I'm kind of going, I'm trying to see how it would work from the opposite side, but um, I guess there's an opportunity there where maybe it will change something. I guess if it's an integer, you wouldn't have to really do anything. Well, I guess in a sense, this is kind of nice. It's it's another building block in the sense of if I know the range and I know like, hey, there's only field zero through 10 and you're passing through 13, then I know, okay, obviously you sent me through a bad field, so that's not good. So I guess that's why I built it like that. See, I was thinking ahead and I didn't even realize it. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna say, if the quality of service level is not none, so if what you sent me through is good, let's make that request. And then else, uh, raise, and then I'll say value error. And it's really simple at this point. I just say error with an exclamation mark. Okay, once we've done that, we can actually build our request. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna do request equals self, and then it's gonna be new request template. And then with this request template, we're gonna have a couple of keywords that we're gonna pass through. The first one is the service that we want to use. And with the service, it's gonna be 
admin. And then we're gonna do our command, which is our quality of service, all uppercase. We are going to do, <coughs> excuse me, uh, request. And then what is it? Parameters. And then the parameter for this one is QOS level. And then it will be our quality of service level. And then we're going to take our self.data request. I'm going to call that request, request key. And I'm going to call the append method and add the current request that I just built to it. So that's a simple request. At this point, <laughs> um, we actually have enough to make our first request using our streaming client. So here we're going to call stream. I'm going to call my TD streamer and I'm going to say quality of service request. I'm going to do QoS level and I'm going to pass through zero first. So define quality of service request. Excuse me one second. Um, and then from here, what we're going to do is we're going to actually stream our data. So hopefully, <laughs> keyword hopefully, there's no issues. But for our first run through, um, it's probably not going to work perfectly. This is assuming I typed everything correctly and there were no errors. Receive. <coughs> Nine, non type object. Message, message, message. Um, hold on a second. I think it had to do with that. This is kind of the problem too, is especially at this really simple stage right now, it's um, it's definitely uh, not doing things that necessarily it should be doing correctly, but that's okay. Um, data request, that's fine. Stream, that's fine. Our login request, that's fine. And then our connection, where is my receive message? Data, connection, oh. Mm, connection. I'm just going to put that and see what happens. That's the problem is I've written it so many times. Okay, perfect. So this one worked fine. Um, yeah, there's going to be little typos like that. So apparently I don't need to pass through the connection. So Ideally, what I could probably do is just get rid of this entirely and it would probably still work because I don't see anywhere else I'm using it. Um, but you can tell that it clearly is making the request to the server and it's streaming it. Now, in this case, because we just did a quality of service request, that's a one-time thing. It's not gonna send us anything back. Um, but what I do wanna try is I wanna try some of our just different requests and see what we get. Let's do level two quotes. That's always fun, right? I don't think it's going to work though, because I think it's actually aftermarket hours. So I don't know if this one will actually return anything, but um, we can try it and see what happens. But really the idea here is kind of pretty much the same, right? So we're just going to validate your arguments. We're just going to make a new request for level two quotes. It's the listed book service, and we're going to subscribe to it. Um, there's only three fields, I believe. Um, I think I tried it with something else, but it didn't necessarily return an error, but I don't think it's correct. <laughs> so that's normally what happens, right? You try it and you're like, wait a minute, like this isn't working. So let's try IBM and see what happens. Uh, where is it? Again, just as a reminder too, um, some of these services are not available all day. So you might be only able to access them during certain market hours. So I think quotes is one of them. I think it gives you like the last snapshot, if I remember correctly. Um, oh, what did I name it? Level one, level one, level one. Did I not put level two in there? 
Hmm. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Sorry, that was one of my updates I didn't do, but that's okay. This is fine. Yeah. Is that fine? Yeah, I think that will be fine. <sighs> Hold on. See, this is a problem. I use code from something I didn't do the first time. Hold on. We will get this working. I forgot my comma. Oh, okay, there we go. So you can clearly see there is some wonderful data that is related to our listed book. Now I feel very proud about this because there is no documentation on this anywhere, <laughs> like none. So this was using the old API documentation that somebody sent me. And then basically what I did was I just tried to experiment a little bit and see if it would work. Lo and behold, it worked. Um, but that means we can actually get level two quotes. So even though there's no documentation on it, we can get it. Um, but because it's after market hours, um, this one doesn't actually work all the time. So unfortunately, nothing really happens. Now with this, because there's no actual streaming data anymore, it will actually stop. Um, so it's kind of built in where the server will close it. Additionally, there's gonna be some certain things that I have to do that will close it. Cause right now you're seeing it's just lagging. Well, it's because I haven't defined anything to actually close the, um, the service. Now that was the level two one and I'll show you the level two for NASDAQ, but I want you to see that even though I'm putting in more fields than I'm supposedly supposed to, it doesn't seem to return an error. So I don't know what that means in the sense of if it's technically allowed or not, but it doesn't seem to be presenting a huge issue in the sense that anything's a problem with it. So for the time being, I can't say with 100% certainty that's always gonna work, but it hasn't thrown any issues yet. I'm gonna go down to the bottom because I put this one way at the bottom. NYSC, so there's an NYSC one too, but I don't have a count with that one, so I don't think I can use it. Um, I think there's a service though that you can pay for that will give it to you. But yeah, so that's level two with that. Um, we don't have that one. And then from here, let's see what happens. So this one's from Microsoft. And that's the other thing too, is you have to make sure that you cannot submit Microsoft to the regular level two quotes because I tried that and it didn't give me anything back. That one, because I think it's traded on NASDAQ, it has to go with that one. Um, but that seems to be the issue. Again, because it's after market hours, it's only gonna send it back once. But I will tell you, if you were running this during the day, you are going to get back a ton of information because obviously with book data, I mean, this can be all the transactions made within like a few seconds. It's remarkable the amount of data you get back. But um, I'll put it into a JSON one so you can kind of see what it looks like. So we'll just call it book data dot JSON. And then I'll put that there and then I'll format my document, control A, control H, and then replace that with that. And then let's format our document some more. Great. So you have your NASDAQ book and it looks like it gives us one, two, three. And then for each one of those, there is some kind of key, the value. Um, and then I think maybe the, it's not the timestamp obviously, because I think that's the timestamp. So I'll have to do a little bit of research. I honestly don't know what these values would mean. Maybe if somebody's looking at this right now, they're going like, Alex, that's blatantly obvious. If you could share that, that would be great. Um, but yeah, you can see that it gives you pretty much everything. And then again, with listed book, 
we have it here as well. But yeah, pretty cool stuff. I mean, it was really neat um, to kind of see how that all works. And then again, okay, is if somebody could please test the futures one for me, that would be really helpful right now. So just as a little reminder, if you could just test out this one, because it looks like you do have to have an account service for it. So these three down here, that would be remarkably helpful. And then for futures options, if somebody was asking about that, you have to put a dot in front of it, apparently. So apparently if you put a dot in front of it, it works fine. But with that, I think we are good to go. So if you have any questions, feel free to put them down in the comments below. But for the most part, that's pretty much it. I mean, I know it was only three videos, but the only other thing we really have to do is the closing and any kind of minor changes that come up beyond that. But for right now, this is pretty much the streaming API. I'm gonna be adding in more functionality that will do things related to writing to a file or something like that, and then maybe incorporating some logic. But for anybody who's kind of just like, hey, I wanted to understand like how this is working and then kind of just go from there, this is pretty much all you really need in order to stream. Um, at this point, the only thing you would have to add in is how are you gonna save your data or something like that. Really, all you're gonna be doing that, sorry, all where you're gonna be doing that is really in your received message component. So here, you can build in some extra logic that says like, okay, take all my data and like put it into a text file, right? Like nothing crazy, but at least that way you have some kind of immediate way of saving your data. Um, and that way you don't have to kind of wait on me to necessarily build it. So again, if you're kind of just like rearing to go, that's definitely the way to do it. Other than that, if you have any questions, feel free to put them down. Otherwise, we will see you in the next video where we are gonna do some SEC scraping. Ooh, you got a fun one with this one. This is gonna be fun. It was amazing how much data I was able to get so quickly. I'm really excited to share that one. But uh, yeah, see you soon.